Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. Becker County authorities confirm one man is dead and another is in custody after a shooting late yesterday afternoon in Audubon, Minnesota. 29-year-old Michael Ray Mason is facing charges of first-degree manslaughter. Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter Bailey Hurley talked with neighbors in the area and has the very latest on our story. Bailey? It's a much quieter scene here on Eagle Street in Audubon when just less than 24 hours ago, crime tape and police scattered all over this block. Now, we're still not sure exactly what happened in this greenhouse here yesterday afternoon, but neighbors and business owners in the area tell me they didn't hear a thing. They also say they have never heard of or seen who police say is the suspect in this shooting, 29-year-old Michael Ray Mason. Now, we did some digging on Mason and found that he has quite the long criminal history with almost 40 charges against him for things like theft, burglary, drugs, and numerous charges for disorderly conduct and damages to property. Now, Audubon has a population of less than 600 and this crime has taken the town by storm. Dozens of people have driven up and down this block today, slowly looking at the house and asking, how did this happen? Police have not yet identified who the victim was in this shooting, but we do know that the victim was a man. Now, just minutes ago, two women pulled up into the driveway and went into the house for the first time since yesterday afternoon. They did not want to comment as to how they're related to what unfolded here yesterday or make any comment at all. Reporting in Audubon, Bailey Hurley, Valley News Live. Thank you, Bailey. And as she said, authorities still have not released the name of the deceased victim, but stick with Valley News Live as we continue to follow this story. Breaking news for you, authorities say two individuals are now in custody following a domestic violence call that turned violent. Just before four this afternoon, West Fargo police responded to a domestic call between a man and a woman in the 100 block of 14th Avenue East. Police say when they got to the home, the man and woman became aggressive toward them and were taken into custody. No injuries are being reported in the incident and police have not released any further information at this time. Authorities say a theft investigation turned drug bust in Fergus Falls ended with three people arrested, $1,700 worth of merchandise recovered, and 323 grams of meth seized. It happened Monday afternoon when police say they were called on a theft report. They tracked down the suspects and then searched their apartment. Uh, during the search, they found the stolen merchandise along with the drugs. They arrested 37-year-old Grant Grayton, 33-year-old Ronald LeMasters, and Michael Stavadal. They were all arrested on a range of theft and drug charges. We enjoyed sun and above freezing temperatures today, even a little melting snow. Let's find out from Hutch how long we'll get to enjoy the warmer weather. Hutch? Well, I'll tell you what, it was nice driving around on wet streets as opposed to white streets. A beautiful sunset with the sun mingling with a few clouds out in our western sky. As we head into our evening hours, look at these temperatures. 47 Aberdeen, 41 Fargo, Bemidji is at 37 degrees. A little bit of mixed precipitation potential showing up along the international border. Otherwise, most areas very quiet for this evening. In Fargo, temperatures will slip into the mid-30s for most of our evening. It will remain breezy as well. And up north, we'll have an increase in clouds, some in the... Far north may see a few sprinkles this evening. Watch for slippery roads as temperatures slip into the lower 30s. Winter, Andrea, is set to return. A mixed bag of precipitation for your Thursday is on the way. I'll have details in your hour by hour forecast here in a few minutes. All right, thanks, Hutch. We have new surveillance video for you to look at of the people allegedly involved in a counterfeit money ring in the FM area. These are the people Fargo police are looking for in connection with those fake bills. This scam has been going on since about October. Police say several $100 bills have been used in the metro, mostly at gas stations. They say the scammers are prepaying for gas with a $100 bill, then getting about 90 bucks back in cash. All of the bogus bills have the serial number B217047 35D. A woman accused of stealing from a West Fargo trucking company that she worked for has been found guilty of theft. Court documents state 37-year-old Stephanie uh, Natila was found guilty of stealing from GMR Transportation and is ordered to pay over $80,000. She also will have to serve five years of probation along with 200 hours of community service. 
Usually during the holiday season, families get together, catch up, eat, and may show affection by giving hugs. But Girl Scouts of America is telling parents not to force their daughters to give hugs to relatives this holiday season. Valley News Team's Maddie Jelseth found out why. Jen Mason is a grandma who says she looks forward to receiving hugs from her grandchildren every holiday season. I love hugs. <laughs> I'd feel really disappointed if my kids, my kids, grandkids came and they didn't hug. Mason's grandkids live far away, so when she does get to see them, she says it's nice to give them a hug. I think it's a way of showing affection and showing that you do really care for someone. Kimberly Ackerson agrees. When you see, haven't seen family members in a while, so you give them a hug. Girl Scouts of America says hugs that aren't the kid's idea can give them the wrong idea about consent and physical affection. Girl Scouts also say giving girls a choice to hug people or not doesn't just promote self-respect, but also safety. Giving your family member a hug during the holiday season isn't weird or doesn't give me less self-respect. Instead of giving hugs, counselors recommend you to give high fives, fist bumps, special handshakes, or... At least say, hi, Grandma. I love you, Grandma, or something like this. Because some acknowledgement can still go a long way. In Fargo, Mandy Jalseth, Valley News Live. If you would like to learn more about teaching your daughters or sons about physical boundaries, head to our website, valleynewslive.com, and click on this story. Two men are injured after a truck exploded at the Peterbilt facility in North Mankato, Minnesota, this afternoon. Police say Peterbilt employees were working on a compressed, natural gas-powered garbage truck just before noon when a fuel leak filled the shop with natural gas fumes. An unknown ignition source triggered an explosion, destroying the garbage truck and badly damaging at least three other vehicles. Police say a 59-year-old Ellendale man who was working on the truck suffered first and second degree burns and was airlifted to a St. Paul hospital. A second employee, a 41-year-old man from Gibbon, suffered minor injuries to his hand and was treated at the scene. The overhead shop doors were destroyed and the blast caused other structural damage to the building. West Fargo Public Schools have teamed up with the city's police department to host a forum where they take a look at student substance use, abuse, and addiction. Valley News Team's Katie Opperly joins us live from West Fargo High School with a preview about tonight's event. Katie? I'm here at West Fargo High School where administrators, teachers, students, parents, and even people of the community are joining to discuss abuse and addiction for our youth. The forum will look at substance use in the metro area and how these substances impact our youth. We'll also hear from parents who have lost their children due to addiction and hear their story. After a former West Fargo teacher, Elizabeth Doster, resigned back in August for supplying minors with alcohol, discussing topics like this have become more of a priority within our community. I'll be out here at the forum and bring you more information continuing this evening. For now, in West Fargo, Katie Opperly, Valley News Live. All right, thank you, Katie. All ages are welcome to attend, but organizers are cautioning you that some topics may not be appropriate for children under the age of 13. Traffic should be moving a little smoother in North Fargo today since 10th Street North and University Drive are back to one-way traffic. For drivers, that means 10th Street is open from 4th Avenue to 12th Avenue, and all detours are removed on University Drive. When crews open 10th Street North at the railroad underpass, there will be a single driving lane through the project as work continues in the boulevards. Former championship race car athlete and entrepreneur Danica Patrick was in town today hosting the Chamber's ninth annual Voices of Vision. Over 900 people were there to hear Patrick speak about pushing your limits and pursuing your dreams. Patrick is said to have inspired the audience, sharing what she's learned from both the track and now her new businesses, including a clothing line and a vineyard. She focused on three points that have made her successful. Dream, know the difference between quitting and letting go, and don't take, don't take things personally. Always understand that when you're met with some kind of uh, defensiveness or resentment or somebody projects something onto you, it's not a reflection of you. It's really a reflection of that person. And you know that when you've done your best because you did everything possible and you're coming at it from the right frame of mind with the right heart and with the right intention. Danica Patrick made headlines with her record-setting performance in the 55th Daytona 500 race at Daytona International Speedway. We told you how Sandy's Donuts is expanding its business, opening a new location soon in South Fargo, 
And today we learned where it'll be located, 4281 45th Street South. That's near the Osgood Hornbachers. This will be the third Sandy's Donuts to open in the area, and the owners are hoping it gives the community easier access to their donuts. The store is expected to open in the summer of 2019. Thanksgiving is just around the corner, and soon after that, we'll be celebrating Christmas and all the New Year's parties that follow. If you plan on hosting a party, experts suggest you take some pressure off yourself by planning in advance. Some examples, designate others to bring food or set the table the night before. You could also have an activity uh, station for kids or bring out the board games or card-making materials to keep guests entertained before the meal is served.